up, folks. We're going to play some tunes for you here today. And uh, we're happy to be here in such a nice, pretty place with pretty people and everything. Thanks for being here. Karen Evans with Breaking Up Christmas, folks. <laughs> with Dirk Powell, Tim O'Brien, and Jim Miller on Breaking Up Christmas. Well, there's definitely no plan that went into this workshop, but we don't really need one. The music has been there for hundreds of years, so we just kind of tick some for you is all we really do. I imagine. We could, we'll take some questions, but I think we should play some more tunes, don't you think? Press on, press forward. Here's one of those songs that uh, sort of told the news story of the day. Uh, I don't know. It's a, one of the classic murder ballads. 
And uh, Ralph Stanley, I guess, is the version that I, I was the most influenced by, but there's lots and lots of them, and Tim has recorded one with Dirk, actually. And it's a great song. And the one uh, we're going to do right now is actually learned from Fred Cockerham from Mount Airy, North Carolina. <laughs>
feature uh, Dirk Powell on a tune. Hey. We do a song of uh, Dirk's from his recording album called uh, Hand Me Down. Uh, this might come from Fred Cockrum too, but I, don't, I learned it from Jim Miller right there. That's my source. Yes, it's been passed from many generations. That's my certifiable folk source. Carlton is a fiddle player from up around there, 
and uh, his daughter Rosalie married this guy named Doc Watson. And uh, I heard Gaither fiddling through uh, Doc's music. Do two tunes from uh, him and then another tune, an Irish tune. The first one is called uh, Pear Tree, and the second one is called uh, uh, Muddy Roads. The third one is called I'm Not Sure What.
questions out there from the members of the audience? Good. Oh, Not a one. And we don't have any answers out there. Do we have any answers? No. Is there a question? I think I had a question there. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. You think it'll outlive me? No, I, I don't know. I really don't. That's a good question. Hard to answer, though. But Tim's been a good answer. How each, we'd like to tell each of you how do we got into old time music. <laughs> I was hired to do the talking on this gig, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, maybe the wrong man for the job, but I'd like to ask Jim Miller, Dr. Jim Miller from uh, uh, New York. He's from Piermont, New York, aren't you? Yes, that's true, Tim. <laughs> Is that where you're from? Yes. Tell us about yourself, Jim Miller, and how you got into old time music. <clears throat> well, I guess I got into it, um, actually, I think I was into Jimi Hendrix, and then I heard Doc Watson, and then I started listening to more and more... Uh, Acoustic music, and I follow the record that they put out together. No, <laughs> it's, it's such a good one. Hard no. to get though. No. And then uh, I just really enjoy. Oh, uh, uh, one record uh, called June Apple came out on County Records a long time ago, and that was an incredible record. And pardon? all the the Mount Airy fiddle players and and uh, the people that have influenced so many people uh, through the years. Most of them are now dead. Tommy Gerald and Fred Cockrum and those people were on that record and that really got me excited. <coughs> Probably. Is in it CD June form. Is it a... It's County on County, county records. records. June Apple, huh? It's great. And then, you know, meeting people and uh, it's a great community too, I'd have to say. The old time picking people are a, a fun people to hang with, so that goes a long ways. I've known Dirk since he was a little sprout. Before we t ask Dirk how he got into this music, just want to remind you there's a wonderful magazine you can buy if you're interested in this kind of thing and don't much, know much about it or the people who are in it. You can find out it through uh, the Old Time Herald. I don't know. You can probably find their website somewhere. Oldtimeherald.com. I'd try that. Dirk, what, is, what about your, uh, your influ influences and things? Well, I was, uh, I was raised in Ohio, which was... Uh, there's a little bit of old time music up there, but... The way I got started really was uh, listening to my grandfather play. He was from Eastern Kentucky, and uh, like a lot of people from Eastern Kentucky, my family went up uh, Route 23 uh, up to Northern Ohio. You know, read, ride Route 23 North. They joke that's the three hours in uh, Eastern Kentucky because a lot of people uh, think they got to get out of there to, to make a better life. That's kind of what my family did. But I was growing up in a little college town in Ohio, and uh, you know, I had a lot of opportunities for certain things, but I didn't have a good sense of belonging, you know, a lot of teenagers these days don't get that too clearly, you know, but you can tell from everything that's going on, so I spent a lot of time with my grandfather, and then through that music, I met people like Jim and Tara, and, uh, you know, I started meeting people in the old-time scene when I was maybe 13 or so, 12, 13, and uh, so between those two things, I really found a family. I kind of found my family, my real family with my grandfather, and I found a family of people that I could be uh, myself with in the old-time community, so just went on from there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tara Nevins. Tell us about yourself, Tara Nevins. Um, my story is a little bit different <laughs> than Derek's. Um, I'm from New York State, and I was going to, I was in music school up at um, Crane School of Music in New York State, up near Canada. And my roommate, the first year of school, I was studying uh, violin, classical violin. And my freshman year, my roommate, was in some band, extracurricular band, and she was going to play some gig, and she asked me if I wanted to come, and so I said, of course. So I went with her to this gig, and she was playing in a bookstore with this band called the St. Regis River Valley String Band, which meant nothing to me. I mean, it didn't ring any bell of any kind. And So I went to this gig, and there was the first string band I ever heard, which was just a funky old fiddle and banjo and upright bass and guitar, and... Uh, that was the first time I heard old time music, and that was a new day in my life. And uh, that I just started, I kind of had to control myself and not, I wanted to just dive right into the fiddle right then, but um, 
I was working pretty hard on my classical studies, so I had I made myself wait until I graduated, um, which was a couple of years later. And uh, the minute I got out of school, I uh, dove right into old time music world, and I met Dirk and Jim and uh, the whole bunch of us. And actually, uh, a lot of the members of Don and Buffalo, we all met, you know, in the old time scene. And that's that's about it. That was uh, many years ago. About you, Mr. O'Brien. All right, real quick, I got into Doc Watson, I saw him on TV and uh, got a record of him with Flatten the Scruggs and, you know, it's just one of those things behind the door that says Doc Watson, there's all this other stuff, and uh, including Tommy Gerald and Fred Cockrum and uh, West Virginia fiddlers and uh, old banjo players and you know, West Virginia's in the house. Bluegrass and everything else. So... Um, but it is a great scene. It's sort of a different scene than, than you see at Telluride too much. There's, a, there's a, some notable festivals. Mount Airy's one, uh, first weekend of June every year, Mount Airy, North Carolina. And uh, that's, and also Clifftop, right? This, this is the other best one. That's in West Virginia, uh, the first weekend of August. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty new festival, actually. Another old one is uh, Galax, and uh, Galax, Virginia, Virginia. This is like on uh, David Letterman when they say the ta a town or something. Uh, the Festival of American Fiddle Tunes is another good one. In, uh, mm -hmm. right? I've never been to that one, but that's in Port probably a good one, yeah. yeah. Port, Port Townsend, Port Washington. Townsend, Washington. It's in the, in the uh, Puget Sound there. The greatest, thing, the greatest thing about old-time music is there's no money to be made in it, so uh, it keeps it really honest. And I think that really uh, stands for something. That's what's kept this show on such a fast pace today. <laughs> that kind of a bait. <laughs> yes. This is a tune that's a, there's a lot of different versions of this one, but there's also a story that goes with it. It's called The Hangman's Real. The story is that this, this terrible criminal was about to be hanged for a terrible, despicable crime. And they asked him if he had a last request, you know, a drink or cigar or whatever. He saw a guy with a fiddle case off on the side and he said, I'd like to borrow that man's fiddle, play one last tune. Well, this is the tune that he played, and as he started, he was sounding pretty good, but he kept getting better and better. Pretty soon, they let him off free, and that's why today there's still so many fiddlers around, <laughs> in spite of everything. Even with capital punishment. tuning because this is in an open tuning. The, the fiddle strings are tuned uh, A, E, A, E. That's why you're waiting.
another big part of our bartender Tom here. heritage tradition. Oh, that's all right. I'm doing fine. I'm drinking. <laughs> I just had one sip, and that's enough for the whole day for me up at this altitude. That's true. Does anybody who's got anything to make me hiccup? Say what? Yeah. All right, we're gonna play a song about drinking, about gambling, about traveling around, about playing the fiddle, and uh, it's a true life story, true life song. Actually, I've never gambled in Spain. <laughs> I think I've played cards in England, but I don't think I've gambled in Spain. It's about time, man. You better get on on it. <laughs> Something to live for. I, to, I must put that on my date book. Let's see, that would be nice in October. Gamble in Spain. <laughs> How many different chords of A would you like today? We've got different versions. We've got this one. Ooh, that's a nice one. I like that one. Like a lot of this stuff, um, this music kind of comes from another place. It sort of stayed uh, the same for a long time in Appalachia, I guess, and Piedmont down there by North Carolina, Mount Area and stuff. But it also comes from earlier antecedents in the British Isles and the rest of Europe, really, mixed with uh, African influences in the United States. The addition of the banjo and, and a rhythmic feel. Oh, we got her. These uh, lyrics to this song exist in uh, quite a lot in the British Isles and folk songs there in Ireland. Just, uh, this is our, uh, we'd like to inform you that we are professional musicians. Thank you.
Request. This is uh, kind of an old-timey number, even though it's a new song. Sometimes you have new songs that are folk songs too, and uh, I'm uh, still grappling with that a little bit. But I think uh, that it's I get more and more the impression that this music is sort of like one long song. I mean, it's like this is like the next verse of the last song, which was just a slightly different tinge on the song, you know, the verse before it, which was a whole other song, and uh, that just uh, the same issues keep coming up in songs through the generations and. Uh, Old songs speak to you just as well as new ones do. A lot of times. This is kind of in the tradition of ballads, sort of about wars and stuff, mercenary soldiers in Ireland. Mexican-American war, specifically here. The San Patricio Battalion. Oh, tuning. Down in the years of the Irish hunger, sailed away to America when the country was much younger. Now the place was strange and work was scarce, and all he knew was farming. So he followed his other Irish friends to the job in the U.S. Army. The adventure called and some men run, and this is a sad story. How some get drunk on demon rum, some get drunk on glory. Got the story. This is by the request, by the way. By request, by the way. They marched down Texas way to the banks of the Rio Grande. They built 
build a fort on the banks above the Tonto Santa Ana. They were cheated bad and they were paid worse, and then the fighting started. The more they fought, the less they thought of that damned old U.S. Army. And then she called it some men run, and this is a sad story. Now some get drunk on demon rum, and some get drunk on glory. Church bells rang on a Sunday morning, set his soul to shiver. He saw the seniorita's washing their hair on the far side of the river. Then John Riley and two hundred more Irish mercenaries. They cast their lot right or not, south of the Rio Grande. And then she calls in some men run, and this is a sad story. Some get drunk on demon rum, some get drunk on glory. Now they fought bravely under the flag of the San Patricios. Until their Yankee soldiers beat them down at the Battle of Churubusco. Black mules on the cheeks, they were hot iron branded. Made to dig the graves of fifty more who were hanging, faded handed. Adventure called in some men run, and this is a sad story. Ah, some get drunk on demon run, some get drunk on glory. Stands and he drinks alone at a bar in Veracruz. And he wonders if it matters much if you win or if you lose. I'm a man who can't go home, I'm a vagabond, says he. I'm a victim of my wanderlust and my divided loyalty. That bitch called and some men run, and this is a sad story. Some get drunk on demon rum, and some get drunk on glory. And then she calls it some men run, and this is a sad story. Now some get drunk on demon rum, and some get drunk on glory. There's a new folk song for you. Thank you very much. Feature a song by uh, Kirk McGee, and um, then Bill Monroe. They recorded Sam and Kirk McGee is kind of a old-time brother duet that uh, played on the Opry a lot. And uh, Kirk wrote this song, and uh, then uh, Bill Monroe recorded it in the '60s with Richard Green playing fiddle. And then uh, I learned that version and uh, sang it with Hot Rise for every every night for 12 years. And then um, Jim started singing it recently, so we're going to sing it together now and see what happens. Well, you're going to sing it, I'm going to watch. actually has a lot of the same notes as its last song, which was in D minor. Uh, but we just put them in a different order, and somehow it makes a different allu illusion of something different anyway. Um, they have a thing about old-time music. They say it's better than it sounds. Recently, there's been um, 
uh, studies made and it, they found out that it really isn't as good as it sounds. So, uh, so the verdict is really out on those studies. There's differences of opinion, so we'll see. It might be, it might be safe to say that it's probably about as good as it sounds. Put me 